The changes that I'll speak specifically about pharmacy, I could speak more broadly than pharmacy, but at least within pharmacy, uh, the, uh, the changes that have occurred in our educational process, the introduction of the PharmD degree almost two decades ago right now, uh, the breadth of the education and training that our students are receiving uh, place them in an absolutely wonderful position to do more and exciting things than ever before uh, as they enter the healthcare workforce. So I think that in the past we thought about informatics pharmacists, pharmacy informaticists, um, what have you, um, but I, I think those of us in the field are starting to think about what core skill sets pharmacists need to have to work with technology. Um, so it's, you, it's not realistic to have a pharmacist who doesn't know how to use a computer these days. In fact, it hasn't for several years now. But we have to start asking ourselves, and, and those of us who are teaching have to ask ourselves, what core competencies, or competencies should students have as they move forward in their careers? So in terms of students, I think that the pharmacy curriculum might be a little outdated depending on where you are. Some states are certainly more progressive than others. I truly value the impact of residency training and board certification, so ideally a shift more towards increased residency training board certification would be helpful. Recognize as a profession if we're just talking about pharmacy, um, where the opportunities are and, and maybe, you know, steer new residency programs and new fellowship programs to be able to address, you know, where we're going and, wh and what the future is going to be, um, because we should be at the table all the time, we should be an afterthought. We need to be at the table when all these discussions are, are happening. So in order to support the workforce and switching from fundamental pharmacy services to more of a cognitive role, I do think that starting from the beginning with pharmacy school education does need an overhaul, especially depending on what state you're in. And I think increasing residency training and board certification would ideally help shape a more direct patient care type of care model. Ourselves. And, and those of us who are teaching have to ask ourselves, what core competencies, or competencies should students have as they move forward in their careers? Because while there will always be specialists, we need generalists too to make the, use of our, the most use of our technology. On the other hand, every health profession needs a well-trained core of technical personnel. And quite frankly, our profession right now is still grappling with that issue. We recognize its importance but gaining greater consensus on the degree to which technicians are better educated and trained so they can be complementary to pharmacists so that using expression pharmacists can practice at the top of their license is a very fundamentally important objective that we have going forward. So obviously having uh, some experience and knowledge of technology and I think we, we see that now with students graduating the younger generation they grew up with technology and using so I think that that's really where the expertise will, will lie, in addition to clinical skills. Well, I, I think, you know, we need to be open-minded and, and we need to transition. One of my first residents became my IT pharmacist as we were rolling out bedside verification and we were rolling out physician order entry. It took time to convince the CIO that he needed to have that position. But so I've been a real advocate of leveraging technicians. We have a lot of um, advanced roles for technicians already. We have them involved in transitions of care. They actually operate all of our automation and technology. So I think there's an opportunity to provide advanced training and or certificate programs so that technicians can really manage the technology, which is really our current state, and continue to learn how to ma manage the next generation as well. I think one of the biggest things is that as, as pharmacy and our profession, we continue to collaborate with people um, in other, other industries and use those, those experts into meet, helping us get to where we need to be and meet our, our needs as a, a profession. I think some early successes with technology and seeing um, learning from other industries outside of healthcare I think is largely important. Uh, looking at radio frequency ID technology and seeing that it's been used in industries outside of healthcare for decades and seeing those successes and learning from those industries and applying those practices to healthcare and continuing that trend and utilization of this technology and acceptance um, from executives and across the board to see that this technology does provide that additional value to patients to allow the displacement of that workforce to, to focus on, on the clinical aspects within pharmacy to deliver safe and accurate care. To support the future impact that pharmacists can have, we need to use our intelligent automation systems to improve our manual process. Now, absolutely, the C-suite has to sign on to any pharmacy automation that comes in. They're high-cost items. 
Um, I think I think it'll be really important to keep our uh, clinical users up to date with all the technology that, that's available and, and so that we can use it to opt optimize care to the patients. Right now the nurses spend a lot of time just documenting and calling and you know too much of it is taking care away from the bedside and so I think we really need to use the technology to improve that. So skills was one thing, uh, you know, as a pharmacist by trade, we don't really get a lot of official training and automation and technology and how to use those types of systems. A lot of that is on the job learning and so we have to make sure that people are put in the right positions but also have the right background and competencies to be able to keep up with the ever-changing landscape of healthcare and make sure that they're in the right position to uh, be able to provide those services and make sure that they're utilizing technology in their favor and uh, getting the most from their resources. Uh, we're all constrained financially uh, to make sure that we're being efficient and using our resources to the best of our ability. So having people doing the right things at the right time is going to make sure that we reach some of those bottom lines and set that foundation and be able to utilize the technology and automation. So I think just kind of uh, describing and explaining the team uh, the role of technology and uh, and I think we'll get there. I mean these days, uh, believe it or not, I mean infants are, are born with technology. I mean they, they're, you're born and you're looking at a touch screen uh, to do something. So I, I think people are more adaptive of technology. I think it, it will inc only increase with time. Uh, but data is something that we'll, we'll really need to change our practices. I think the big thing is um, uh, we need to function with data uh, and uh, you know as data become available and we change our practices with the automation and the data that's available um, you know of course uh, as with time people get intimidated with technology but we're not really utilizing technology to take away someone's job. We're really uh, absolutely not. I think it allows us to, to gain the efficiencies that we need and actually restructure and redistribute people to other areas so that we can provide more services and even better services in a more efficient manner. I don't see it replacing people. I just see the responsibilities and what our function is or will be changing. All right, because automation, we still need someone to oversee the automation. So it's not going to replace people, but your skill set will need to adapt to it. When it comes to pharmacy automation and enhancing the daily operations, it's not about replacing people. It becomes more of a shift from, I'm spending my time on doing fundamental services like counting or dispensing towards a more cognitive role. So it doesn't replace people, it enables people to have more time to perform more direct patient care. Great. Possibly in the distributive function, but not in the clinical thought processes. But it, hopefully to allow the people to be with the patients more. I don't want to see it replace people. I think naturally it will happen over time um, just because it is a more efficient way to do business. That being said, I'm, a, I'm in the business of taking care of people, uh, whether they're sick and in beds or whether they're working for me. At the end of the day, I'm in the business of taking care of people. And if I can take somebody who is highly qualified, highly intelligent and driven and give them a new role that they enjoy and is valued within the company, then I'm gonna do that every time. Uh, yes, but in a good way. Um, you know, computers don't run themselves, so you'll have to have people in the right positions to make sure that things are running smoothly and that you're utilizing your automation to the most effective ability that you can. Um, and so when I look at technology, you know, a lot of people fear it because they think that it's gonna replace humans and that we're gonna have less opportunity for jobs. And I think that just challenges our dynamic a little bit to force us to think outside of the box a little bit. Um, do some things that we traditionally haven't done and find ways to be more creative with our labor but also utilizing technology to our advantage but keeping people integrated with those processes so that um, you know things are all working on one accord. If you look at the literature, the reality is that automation is not here to replace humans. Um, but the real question is how can humans work better with automation to make a, I mean, to make a positive outcome? Um, when, when, our, when our team members are worried about having their jobs replaced, uh, we lose that intrinsic motivation to use our technology in the right way um, and really we find ourselves in a bad place. Um, when users are trained and when they have the opportunity to, um, to buy into the process, to help design it, uh, it, it works out better for everybody and I think it decreases that fear. Automation I see as a supplement uh, to the people and to the workforce. Um, as described for our pharmacy technicians, um, to really have them practice at the top of their certifications is owning the, the pharmacy operational pieces. And for them to do that in a safe and efficient manner, technology has to be part of the equation. Uh, I think automation will streamline processes. I, I'm a believer that we have to justify the people that we have. 
Uh, I suppose that in some organizations they may, but actually I'm finding that we need the staff that have the knowledge and skills to be able to manage the technology. And so I see, as I've mentioned, the higher level technician uh, or individual who can manage the technology and the data. When we have automation and we use it wisely, it can provide a great impact. But when we use automation in the wrong way, we don't have any empathy or patient personalization. I think we retool folks. We have a really uh, strong, uh, we, we have a large staff of very intelligent, very driven people, pharmacists, technicians, analysts, um, and, and I really think that pharmacy has kind of stepped forward here uh, j just in the last couple of months. I've hired three tech former technicians as data analysts. That's what they do now. They, they, they don't dispense drugs, they don't make IVs, they crunch numbers and they make sure that we're doing things the way we should be doing things and the way we're telling people that we're doing things. So, so. I've been a real advocate of leveraging technicians. We have a lot of um, advanced roles for technicians already. We have them involved in transitions of care. They actually operate all of our automation and technology. So I think there's an opportunity to provide advanced training and or certificate programs so that technicians can really manage the technology, which is really our current state, and continue to learn how to ma manage the next generation as well. We don't, we don't use automation to replace FTEs. What, what we really do is we make sure that the people that we have in place right now that are good at their jobs, that want to take care of people that are experienced still have a job tomorrow and those jobs change as well so your folks that are making the IVs right now may be the folks that are getting stock they may be the folks that are uh, maintaining equipment they may be the people with the next big idea of, of what's our next piece of automation what's our next analytical enterprise